Hello everyone! Today we will look at how to make the IR drone fly autonomously. We will start with connecting the GPS antenna to the drone. Next we will look at some checklists and finally we will go through an autonomous flight. In case of the IR drone, the GPS data is sent through USB cable, so you will need a cable which provides connectivity between the USB and serial UART interfaces. We recommend you use a U-Blocks GPS receiver and a USB to UART cable with the 3.3 voltage TTL level UART signals. You will have to connect the yellow receiver cable to the receiver port on the GPS board, the orange transmitter cable to the, to the transmitter port, the black ground cable to the ground port and the red voltage cable to the voltage port on the GPS board. Place a plastic or rubber protection around it and then connect it to the drone. You really don't want to lose this connection during an autonomous flight, therefore I will place some tape around it to secure the connection. Next we place the GPS receiver on the side of the drone such that during impact the antenna will not hit the ground. I will use some tape to secure the connection both on the left and right, top and bottom. Next, I will prepare the airframe file of the IR drone for an autonomous flight. I have already calibrated the magneto sensor and I have taken into account the current calibration. The one thing left to do is to add the local magnetic field of the Earth. I can do this in two ways. Load the GeoMag module, which will automatically load the local magnetic field as soon as my GPS position is known or fill in the local magnetic field by hand in the Attitude Heading Reference System section. Next, I want to make sure I can visualize the map of the region I want to fly in. Once I will be out on the field, I will not be able to download the map through Wi-Fi, so I will do it beforehand. I will open the Ground Control Station program. In the command line, I will specify the location of my flight in World Geotetic System 84 coordinates. Add minus center and specify the latitude and longitude. Go to Maps and Maps Fill and it will download the tiles automatically. Uh, the last thing I have to do before going to the field is to save a session that contains all the necessary programs for an autonomous outdoor flight. In addition to the ground control station, the data link and the server, I need a messages program to see which messages the drone is sending and receiving. And the joystick program in which I will specify what type of joystick I am using. I will be using an RC transmitter connected to the laptop with a USB cable. I called my calibration file rctransmitterusb.xml. Now go to Session, press Save and call it AirDrone 2 Autonomous Flight. Before going to the field, I will quickly run through a checklist of all the necessary equipment. Check that the drone is in good shape and that all parts are attached and working. Take at least three full IR drone batteries. Take a transmitter or joystick with full batteries and a spare battery. Take a laptop with full batteries and some tape to do some repairs. Once in the field, connect the battery to the drone. Make a connection through Wi-Fi, build and upload the code.
Wait until the LED on the top right side becomes green, indicating the IMU has finished calibrating. Check the LED on the right side at the back of the drone to see if you have a 3D GPS fix. Wait for a successful 3D GPS fix and a successful execution of the geo init block of the flight plan. You will notice this happened as the waypoints will start disappearing from the screen as they are being moved to the drone's location. Center the map around the drone. I will move the waypoints closer to the takeoff position as in the field I am flying uh, as the field I am flying in is not very big. Fill the area with the map that you have downloaded earlier. Set the waypoint at the desired place and height. In the Rotocraft basic flight plan, all waypoints are set at a height of 5 meters above ground level. I will show you how to change this height in the field. You just select the waypoint. The geo in it tells you that your altitude is 1 meter below sea level. Therefore, if a waypoint is at an altitude of approximately 3 meters, it means it will be 4 meters above ground level. When this number is sent to the drone, the value is rounded off. If the waypoint continues to rotate, it means that the new location has not been sent to the drone. In this case, you have to click on it again to send it one more time to the drone. Now we want to check the magneto. The front of the drone is currently pointing towards the forest. This is correct. Now rotate the drone 180 degrees. It should be pointing away from the trees. If this is not the case in the ground control station, it means that the calibration needs to be repeated. Always wait a few seconds to see if the drone continues to point in the right direction. Initially, the reading is also influenced by the gyros. However, as soon as the gyro effect is gone, the magneto values will be shown. Check the primary flight display to see if the drone is standing on a more or less flat surface. And check the GPS to see your position accuracy, which in this case is 2 meters. In the first flight, we will check the barrow and the GPS signal. We will take off in attitude mode. In the joystick file, you determine which switch allows you to change between modes. On this transmitter, it is the mode switch on the top right side. When the switch is pulled towards the user, it will be in attitude mode. Unkill the drone by giving full yaw command with the throttle to the lowest level. In attitude mode, you are in control of the roll, pitch and yaw angles and the height of the drone. Once you are flying at the height you feel comfortable with, switch to Attitude Set Hold to see if the barometer is working. Change the mode switch to the central position to change to Attitude Set Hold. In Attitude Set Hold you control the attitude, so the raw pitch and yaw angles, while the drone holds the altitude you were at when entering this mode. Your throttle stick position limits the maximum throttle the drone is allowed to use. This is a safety feature that is used in all modes where the height is controlled autonomously. To counteract wind gusts or extreme maneuvers, the drone may need to use the full throttle range. So we will set the throttle stick to its maximum position. In case the drone starts to fly away or lose control, Take over by switching to attitude mode again. Next we switch to hover climb mode to check whether the drone is able to maintain the X and Y position. Hover climb is not a standard mode therefore we have to go to system and to auto 2 and select hover climb from the list. Make sure that hover climb is set as auto 2 mode. If the mode switch is turned one step further, the mode will switch to hover climb. 
The rotograph hovers at the position you are at when entering this mode. The vertical speed is set through the joystick, so you probably need to set your throttle halfway up to keep the vertical speed to zero. Finally, we will switch to Hover Set Hold to see if the drone can autonomously hover in one place. Select Hover Set Hold from the list and set it as the desired Auto 2 mode. As the switch is already in Auto 2 position, this mode will directly take effect. The rotorcraft hovers at the 3D position you are at when entering this mode. As the height is determined autonomously in this mode, your throttle stick position will limit the maximum throttle. To give the drone the possibility to operate in the complete range, we will set the throttle stick to its maximum position. If the hovering is successful, meaning you do not need to control the drone using your joystick, you can decide to go back to attitude mode and land the drone. We are now ready to perform an autonomous flight, as we have checked that all the sensors work properly. I will place a new battery in the drone, make connection through Wi-Fi, build and upload the code again. After successfully uploading the code, I will execute the AirDrone 2 flight autonomous. After a successful geo init block, where the drone determines its 3D location, change the waypoints to the desired place and height above ground level. In this case, I decided to move the waypoints to 4 meters above ground level. Fill the map and clear the track of the aircraft after you've finished moving all the waypoints. We will fly a line between waypoint P1 and waypoint P2, so place them in a line which is clear of obstacles. Set the mode to navigation by turning the transmitter mode switch and make sure the throttle is set to its maximum position. Select the holding point block and when green the start engine block. When you are ready to start the flight select the takeoff block. The drone will automatically fly to the standby waypoint. I then choose to stay at waypoint P1 and to fly between P1 and P2. The drone will try to fly a perfect line between the two waypoints.
Select land here if you feel you have flown long enough or your battery is starting to get low. Kill the drone once it has landed on the ground and the flight is completely finished. Now stop all the programs and remove the battery from the drone and your flight is finished. Thank you for watching.